Alright, I thought I'd do a video just reacting and responding to some of my haters. These people who just obsessively just stalk me and just listen to any little thing I say wrong and just hang on that and just they stalk my social media like this joker right here, Shepherds and Bastard does. And I thought I'd do a video just reacting to some of these videos they've made against me and just refuting what they're saying. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's, it's just funny how these guys, they just, there's some real dangerous false prophets out there and Ever since I just began supporting Brian Dillinger, just saying, hey, you know, I support the guy's ministry, they're just all over attacking me. It's just like they're attacking anyone who is for Brian Dillinger and supports his ministry. It's weird. But I'm going to do a video just reacting to these. these uh, and there's more they've done against me, but these are just ones I've selected because they're just, they're kind of, they're, they're good, good, just good entertainment, you know. They're good for some laughs. But let's get right into it. And here's this first video uh, by by the man himself, Edward Fenninger, you know, and he says, Faithful Servants becomes a follower of Brian Dillinger. And I kid you not, he posted this like two hours after I posted my video apologizing to Brian Dillinger. That's, that's, that's just how obsessed he is. It's crazy. I'm going to turn up the volume. And let's get right into this. <laughs> Good for some laughs. Good evening. On this video, we look at a apology put out by Faithful Servants of Christ. To Brian Denton. Oh wow! Four people who's going to apologize to Brian Denton, <laughs> and oh, as you wow. say, he's a follower of Brian Denton. <laughs> and I, now he is going to talk about being cults, and he's, you know, he accused Brian Denton of being a cult. The Brian Denton would be the worst cult leader in history. That comes from Brian Denton. Brian Denton had a video up there. I'm the worst cult leader in history. <laughs> okay, you know, he's a cult leader. Okay, he's a cult leader. Um, where's the proof? I mean, it, it, it just... It, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I just can't help but laugh a bit. I mean, again, I'm just simply apologizing to Brian Dillinger. I mean, that doesn't make me a follower of Brian Dillinger. Like, he's like... They're the ones that, that say he's my cult leader. I've never said, you know, Brian Dillinger is my leader. They're just saying he's my cult leader. I was just simply apologizing to him. I mean, <laughs> good grief. He's a cult. He's a little cult. No one teaches what he teaches. That's that's basically the essence of a cult. No one's teaching. Um, the standard is the Bible. The standard is not what people teach. Okay, if the Bible says something contrary to what Christians, quote unquote Christians, have always believed, um, you go by what the Bible says. The standard is not what what pe what Christians have always believed. The standard is the Bible. But you know, for Fenninger, he doesn't get that. See that picture back there of the American soldiers and everything. You know, he's a Trump supporter. I've seen him wear Trump, pro Trump shirts and everything. You know. He's got major, major connections and problems. Teaching what he's teaching people. So, but I'm one minute in here. Uh, call Let me go back here. At 30 seconds. Mystery. And some of the things, I'm going to go over some of the things I said in my videos attacking him in the past. I have gotten rid of the videos. But in my videos, I was saying a lot of false things about Brian Dunlinger and saying, you know, things that just aren't true. And, and, I will publicly say that I do support Brian Dillinger's ministry. I have changed my views. I do support his ministry. And some of the things, I'm going to go over some of the things I've said in my video is my false accusations against Brian Dillinger and just publicly apologizing for them and saying... Now you see why we go after guys like Brian Dillinger people? Yeah, you go after him just non-stop. I mean, let me share some scripture real quick. Because here's a verse these guys never follow. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then they'll condemn us for not following that verse. It's funny. Titus 3.10, a man that is a, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. First and second admonition, and they'll say, well, you've done lots of videos against Fenninger. Um, I'm doing videos like this one responding to them, okay? Um, but the Bible says the first and second admonition. Um, this guy has made just hundreds and hundreds of videos attacking Brian, and he's done some stuff attacking me. Not, not hundreds, but he has done... More, way more than two videos attacking me. Uh, King's Table has done stuff attacking me. This this Joker has done some stuff attacking me. These guys never follow this. They, they never follow this uh, verse, Titus 3.10. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to highlight that. So, it's ridiculous. Let's continue. I mean, this, this is, at this point, this is just entertainment. Leave Brian Dangle alone. Leave Robert Blake alone. Leave Gene Kim alone. Leave you. They're, they're destroying young men like this. Uh, again, 
first and second admonition of reject. You don't just make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos against just a couple guys. You know, it's not biblical. I mean, that that's just obsessiveness. It just like Brian says, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. Just video after video after video after video. You know, um, get a life. You know. Again, what does Titus 3.10 say? It's a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay? Reject it. If, if, again, I mean, according to Fendinger and these other, these other goons, I'm a lost, hellbound heretic. Okay, reject me. You know, don't listen to me. Go away from my channel. Don't, I mean, this guy right here is subscribed to me. So I'm a lost, hellbound heretic, but you're subscribed to me? Weird. Let's continue. This young man will never recover from this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll never recover. All you people. Oh, leave Brian Daniel alone. Just teach the Bible. Leave Bob, Robert Baker alone. Just teach the Bible. We, uh, this is why. This young man doesn't know, what, uh, doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an impressionable young man, and now he's gone. He's gone. He, you, you forget about it. He's never come back out of this. <laughs> I was wrong. I, I was wrong when I said my videos. So no, not, now you're wrong. <laughs> Now you're wrong. You've been sucked into the cult. First thing is that uh, I would accuse uh, Brian Dillinger of running a cult. I call it, I like repeatedly. I'd, I'd say he's a cult leader. He's running a cult. Uh, it's not true. Uh, based on what I, based on what I've seen, he doesn't come close to running a cult. He doesn't come anywhere near running a cult. What have you seen? You haven't gone down his house. You don't see anything. See anything? <laughs> okay. What's your proof that he's running a cult? You know. I mean, <laughs> Okay, so I, I mean, I mean, it, it's just this is just entertainment. Brian Dangler teaches false doctrine, and he has a cultish aspect about him. No one's teaching. Okay, I don't agree with everything he says, but come on, hundreds of just video after video after video after video after video. You know, that's weird. It, it, it's just. Again, I don't agree with everything he said. I've openly said in my videos, like, I disagree with him on certain points. That, you know, if I'm a cult member, how does that work? I disagree with him on certain points. So, that, does, that doesn't make me a cult in fact, In fact, not only does it not make, me, not, yeah, not make me a cult member, sorry, Skype right there. Not only does it not make me a cult member, it actually proves that I'm not a cult member. Because cults, what they do is they force all their people to agree with them. I don't. You know, I mean, Denlinger doesn't just, just put, like, hold a gun to my head and say, you know, agree with me or, or else, you know. It's ridiculous. Teaching what Brian Denlinger teaches. It's a little cadre of people teaching nonsense. I mean, he's, he's probably the worst cult leader in history. I mean... Yeah, that comes from Brian Denlinger himself. <laughs> he says that. Uh, the calling of a cult leader is it's ridiculous. I mean... It just shows that you really don't know what goes on. And people will accuse him, and I, I accuse him of this too, which, again, I was wrong. I was wrong when I said uh, I would say, you know, oh, he doesn't have a church, he doesn't meet at home. Well, Denlinger, I saw some stream where he was reacting to people, basically videos people made against him, and he was saying, you know, it's amazing that people somehow know what I do in my home and stuff. It's true. I mean, I, I've never seen, you know, his church service. And I believe he does have a real church. I believe he does actually have people he meets with in his home. He doesn't. Young man. How do you know that? You know, it, I mean, I mean, I mean, just the hypocrisy. So I'm a cult member, but you somehow know what Brian Dillinger does at home, you know? I mean, if I'm a cult member, I never even met Brian Dillinger in person. I don't even know. I don't even, don't even know where he lives. So how, how am I a cult member? You know, and <sighs> this is just fun. And he doesn't meet anybody in his home. Let him put up a video showing somebody's meeting up in home, young man. Um, he does. You know, like Brian says, he doesn't film it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, I've had some of these guys comment on my videos saying, "Oh, John Kragen doesn't work for a living. He doesn't work." Um, yes, I do work. Okay. Again, it's amazing these people just know everything about our personal lives and just know everything we do off camera. It's, it's weird. He doesn't meet anybody. He has no church. <laughs> and his gimmick is why go out and talk to people once in a while. He has no okay, church. Okay, Fenrir, how often do you go out and witness to people? Because hmm? I haven't seen any videos on your channel witnessing to people. I mean, just the hypocrisy. So, Brian Dillinger is false and he's a cult leader because he's just a witness to people. I'm false because I support Brian Dillinger. 
Uh, I'm a cult member, even though I disagree with him. But you don't go, I mean, you don't go out and witness people. I haven't seen any videos of you doing that. All you do is sit in front of your webcam, just attacking people. You know, I mean, Peter Ruckman's wrong, Jim Kim, Gene Kim is wrong, Robert Breaker's wrong. They're all confused. You see, everyone's wrong and confused, except for Ed Fenninger, you know? That's just how it goes. You, I mean, even when I was following Ed Fenninger, I just noticed that, I mean, who isn't confused? Everyone's, I mean, and when I came out uh, teaching dispensational salvation, oh, you know, he had these two hour long videos saying D the dispensational confusion of faithful servants. Everyone's confused except Fenninger, you know? He's the only one that isn't confused, apparently. <sighs> let's, get, let's, let's keep going. This is, this is fun. Church. He used to have videos up defending the house church. He took them down. He just doesn't film it. You know, and no, he, that's not the issue. He doesn't film it because he doesn't have it. Okay. Do you go and preach any fending? Again, I'll, I'll say it again. Do you go preach? I haven't seen any videos of you preaching. Where, you know, I mean, how, how do we know you meet with people? You know, you don't have any videos of that. You see, again, it, it's just hypocrisy. He doesn't film a church... He hasn't saved anybody. He goes, oh, I, I, you know, I, I gave the gospel out, and you know, nah, but I, I wouldn't put him on. He doesn't have any converts. He doesn't have any church. Again, where's your proof on that? You know, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? I mean, it's funny. And, and again, you know, all my video was about was me apologizing to Brian Denlinger, and this guy just has to just do everything I make a video about every thing I do, and just and just if I say something wrong, they'll just just take that and just they'll t completely twist what I was saying. I mean, and it's like they know everything about our personal lives. They know everything we do off camera. I mean, it, it's just it's, this is the real cult like mentality. These people who just just attack us every single day, every single day, just, we gotta expose them, we gotta expose them, we gotta expose them. Why? I mean, there are some real dangerous false prophets out there. I mean, real, I mean, Jesse Morrell, he's pretty bad. I mean, I've done some stuff on him, he's, he's very, very dangerous. Reuben Israel, you know, he's a very dangerous false prophet. Why don't you go after them? Why do you just only go after, I mean, and they go after other people too, but why just only, just primarily Brian, myself, and other people, you know, Tim and Jake too, Tim and JT, you know, just, it's ridiculous. And, and, and something I have noticed is that whenever someone comes up publicly and supports Brian Dillinger, that person would just get attacked by these goons. You know, there, there's a spirit, this hatred towards Brian Dillinger to where when, like when I came out and supported Brian Dillinger, I seen right here, you, you have these guys just come out and just attack me on every single video. You know, it's really where this hatred towards Brian Dillinger. You know, I'm being attacked because I, I, I mean, again, I'm only being attacked, I believe, because I'm supporting Brian Dillinger. And I'll keep supporting him. I'm not going to back down. I mean, unless Brian Dillinger comes out and teaches a really damnable heresy, I'm going to keep supporting him. So, yeah, but it's just this, this spirit, you know, of just satanic hatred of just, we're going to just attack anyone who supports Brian Dillinger. It's weird. I mean, you know, I, I, I do believe that if I were to just stop supporting Brian Dillinger, these these goons would just leave me alone. These goons would just, just you know, stop bothering me. I mean, they might do some videos about me, but they won't just, like, do these super long, just hour-long stuff attacking me, you know? There's a spirit behind that. It's not it's not just disagreement. It's actually, a, like, a satanic hatred behind this. You know, it's ridiculous. I mean, I've exposed people, but I don't expose people where I just listen to, do, where I just listen to everything they put out and just do video after video after video against them. Weird. And satanic, too. He doesn't have anything. Except a, a YouTube video. Like I do. <laughs> I, mean, I don't claim to have a church. You know, I'm just with those no problems. So you assume he has a church, but he hasn't shown it. Well, I mean, okay, so you're assuming he doesn't have a church. You know, I haven't seen it. Well, you haven't seen it either, so you're assuming he doesn't have a church. I mean, where's your proof? You know? I mean, total hypocrisy. He's not, even, he's not even claimed to have a church. He's never claimed to have a church. Because he doesn't have one. He, I, again, where's your proof on that, you know? He has claimed to go, well, people say I don't go out and minister. You know, he doesn't go out and minister to anybody. Uh, um, neither do you, Fenninger. I mean, I haven't seen any, any videos of you doing it. I mean, you know... 
Let's continue. I mean, th this level of, of just heretical, just hypocrisy, it, it, it's kind of, it's giving me a headache, but at the same time, it's it just, it's fun refuting these guys. I have no problem with that. Uh, he doesn't have to film every single thing he does. So, I, I fall sick. He does if he's accepting money. <laughs> okay, I have a Patreon page. I don't film every th everything I do. You know? And it's kind of funny. I heard, I've heard these guys actually got Dillinger's Patreon page taken down. You know? But hey, I, I, I take a, you know, I, I don't plan on, I don't plan on monetizing my channel. You know, I, I don't, even if I wanted to, I'm not able to, but I don't plan on it uh, because, you know, I just don't think it's right to take money from a secular company. Now, you know, I'm going to be honest, if times are rough, I might, you know, monetize a couple of videos. But right as of right now, I have no plans on monetizing my channel. You know, my channel's not monetized and I don't plan on doing it. You know, if times got rough, I might just monetize like one video and that's it. Okay? And I know these guys are probably going to just take that thing I said and just, just twist it in out of context. You know, typical of these guys. But, you know, um, again, it just the absurdity. If he's accepting money from people, which he is, he has a responsibility to tell people where that money's going. Accused him of saying, oh, he, uh, well, I falsely accused him. I was not saying that. That, oh, he doesn't have a real church. You know, he does. I believe wholeheartedly that he does meet the people in his home. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I never heard him say he does. So, my, also, my other, my other accusation is I would accuse him of being a Jesuit. I would call him a Catholic. Um, which, again, you know, personally, I, I was just... I, I, one thing I will confess to, well, I mean, many things I will confess to, but one of the big things I'll confess to... Uh, is I was kind of, I really was just kind of nitpicking about things I would attack, you know, expose him on. Most of the work I was, you know, trying to expose him on, I was just kind of nitpicking, just, you know, taking little things out of context and stuff. And, you know, again, I was wrong. You know, I was just obsessively, just obsessing over one guy, and it was not biblical. Uh, the Bible says that you're supposed to physically rebuke a heretic twice. You know, heretic, you know. So now you're father of this. You just call him a heretic. Now you're saying he's a, your follower. Uh, no, that's not what I said. You're completely twisting my verse. I was saying it in the context of when I thought he was a heretic. Okay? I mean, again, just totally twisting what I was saying. I mean, what I meant when I said that was that when I was exposing him, I thought he was a heretic, so I wasn't following the verse, Titus 3.10, whereas a, for a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, when I was exposing him, I wasn't following that verse. Okay? I mean, just totally twisting what I was saying. I mean, what a complete liar. With him. You get that? I forget how, the, I don't remember how the verse goes off the top of my head, but you expose the heretic twice and that's it. You don't, you don't just make video after video after video after video after video. You expose his heresy. You have no more, more right. to do with him personally. You leave him alone personally. But you continue to expose his heresies. So there's nothing wrong exposing his heresies. The idea, oh, you have to stop after two times. No, we don't, you, don't, you don't try to reach him anymore. It doesn't mean that you have to stop exposing his heresies. And Chapter and verse on that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I mean, where does it say that in the verse? It just says... Heretic after the first and second admonition reject, okay? You reject them. You don't just continually expose them. And he is a heretic. <coughs> Exposing one guy, which is what I was doing, and I was wrong. I would just make, I, I think I made about like a hundred, I, I just made video after video after video against Brian Dillinger, uh, you know, exposing him, but really I was just taking stuff out of context and just like searching for any little thing he said wrong, and you know, and again, like to my shame, uh, I was doing that, and I publicly apologize. I well, he had plenty of things he says wrong. You don't have to look for him too hard. <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of things you say wrong, too. I, I was demonstrated in my videos exposing you. I mean, twisting scripture, twisting James 2, twisting Revelation 14. I mean, I mean I, I've shown the clip in, in my other videos. This guy literally says that, that refusing the mark of the beast is not part of your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. And he says there's eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Again, let me reiterate. Revelation 14. We'll go there real quick. Because, again, if you don't believe in dispensational salvation, here's a 
a good verse, you know, portion of scripture proving it. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his head, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11, And in the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And in verse 12 also is pretty good. Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Hmm. So, this is eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, no, it says if any man worship the beast in his image, and it says they'll taste, they'll taste of the wine of the wrath of God, or they'll drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So, um, Yes, uh, refusing the mark of the beast is definitely part of your salvation. Okay, where does that verse exclude Christians? If anyone will say, well, it's a, it's an act of faith, or he'll say that true Christians won't take the mark. Um, okay, what if they do? Are they still saved? Okay, there's a question I'd like to see him answer. Let's continue. I have to nitpick with Brian Denver. He has so many things he says wrong that it's right out there. He, 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 it's, 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 you know, low, low, uh, low, uh, low, uh, low fruit. You just pick it off the tree. It's wrong. So, low, uh, low hanging fruit. Yeah, I would accuse him. I would take him out of context. I would, you know, call him a Catholic and, you know, again, just, just nitpick him. Yeah, like he does with people. Because <laughs> everybody's Catholic. Everyone's a Jesuit. He ain't doing anything he's not doing. I would just, I mean, I essentially was just, just obsessing. This is why young men shouldn't be coming anywhere with a teacher. He's too young for this. I, I, I'm not a teacher. Okay, I never claimed to be a preacher. Okay, again, another lie. I never, I never claimed to run a ministry, and I don't claim to be a, a teacher. Okay, I make videos about Bible doctrine. That doesn't make me a preacher. Okay. <sighs> I mean, just so many lies in this video. Doesn't know what's going on. And it's like was... you're the one that doesn't know what's going on. I mean, you're. I mean, again, everyone's confused about him. But again, I've, we've, and other people have shown too, this guy is very confused. I mean, it's literally saying that the mark of the beast is not part of your salvation, it's an act of faith. Or he'll say that Matthew 24, verse 13 is physical salvation. Um, that's not in the Bible. And that's not the Holy Spirit leading you to say that. That's a lying spirit. He's apologizing for things he shouldn't even apologize for. He admits, you know, I shouldn't call, call him a heretic. What? He's a heretic. And he doesn't understand the, the, uh, what the, the verse is talking about in Titus 3.10, so he doesn't understand the stuff. But now he's, he's claiming to be a follower of Brian Denver. I, mean, I you know, kind of reiterating what I was saying, but I was just listening. Oh, okay, I'm not a follower of Brian Denlinger. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, I support his ministry, but I'm not a follower of Brian Denlinger. Okay, there's two different things there. I mean, just, I mean, if I were to just write down how many lies this guy has told about me, I, I mean, it's ridiculous. Every little thing he said, and just, you know, just, um, again, it wasn't, it wasn't really healthy, to be honest. So, again, oh. it's not healthy following him either. Believe me, it's not healthy following him. He is a heretic. He's a fraud. He collects money from people, and he doesn't work for a living. Okay. <laughs> okay. Again, where's the proof on that? You know? <sighs> and it's, he collects money from people. Um, no, he doesn't. Act. In fact, he, I, I, you know, in his videos, he says he, he does have a secular job. He does secular work on the side. It's not his primary, primary, prim, yeah, primary income, but it is, he does secular work on the side, but his primary, prim, yeah, having a hard time saying things today, his primary job is his ministry. And he gets donations from the brethren. He doesn't monetize his channel because it's definitely not right to take money from lost people for Christian videos. So, Again, just so many, so many lies. That was wrong, and what I did, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I I have gotten rid of all the videos, all the stuff that I I'm aware of uh, against Brian. I used to know how to ask stuff on other websites. I have my website, or I post some stuff against them there. Uh, if if there is anything on there, because some people have reposted some, you know, um, I have people who just re-upload my videos, so they may have uploaded. Like some people may have re-uploaded some of my stuff against Denlinger, so, you know, I've gotten rid of everything against Denlinger that I made not aware of, but people who re upload Believe there's so many things against Denlinger. Sorry, I'm just trying to get some chips off my desk. You, you, no one's going to miss your stuff. <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I've had enough of this, to be honest, but you get the picture. This guy is just a professional liar. 
I mean, it's just so many lies in this video. But what do you expect from people? I mean, he's lost. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit inside of him. He just, it, it, it's, it's just, you know, just, just, just obsessive. We've got to expose them, you know. It's ridiculous. Now, on to this next video by King's Table. And uh, he did a video attacking me, you know, calling me a, a dingleberry of a denlingerite, you know. And, and he's, he's attacking me on my video I did against uh, miscegenation. Let's watch. Oh, but welcome back. Yeah, Faithful Servants has been making videos against you there, Brother Jason. So it's pretty sad. This guy is a nut, uh, and he needs to repent. That's for sure. 16. He says, oh, the Bible doesn't condemn intermarriage. Okay. Verse 16. And the children of the captivity did so. And Ezra the priest was certain chief of the, of the uh, fathers and of the house of their fathers. And all of them surrounded, or all of them, by their names were separated and sat down in the first day of the month to examine the matter. Verse 17. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of, every, of uh, the first month. Verse 18. And among the sons of the priests, they were found that had taken strange, strange wives, namely the sons of Jeshua and the sons of Josabek and his brethren. I can't say some of these names. I have a hard time. Again, I'm not good at reading stuff on computers. Uh, Mesa, Haya, and El Elazir, and Jerob, and, and Gedaliah. I think that's how you say it. Uh, in verse 19, and they gave their hands that they would not put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram to, of the flock for their trespass. So you see right here, they were guilty of taking strange wives, wives of other kindreds. And you'll say, oh, it doesn't say that. Strange wives. They were strange wives. That means that they were most likely unbelievers. Okay? They were not believers. And these are uh, among the sons of the priests. Okay, so they're unbelievers. Okay, that's partially true, but it's kind of funny because in the verses, in some of the passages, it talks, it actually mentions their kindred. Okay, I'm going to show you the verses in a minute, but let's just keep playing this. Uh, uh, what does strange wives mean? You know? And they had to offer a ram for their trespass. Um, God condemns interracial marriage, and so does the prophet Ezra and the prophet. It doesn't say it condemned interracial marriage. It, they were just not supposed to marry unbelievers. Other nations that were unbelievers, what did they do to their children? Right? They offered them as sacrifices and stuff like that, or you know, uh, would lead them into uh, like this is a start off. If you have other, you know, if you have women who believe other gods, this is going to pass down to their children. If you actually, corrupt the children. Sorry, I apologize. I'm, I'm sick right now. I, I have a runny nose, so I do apologize if I'm sniffling. I, I am trying not to. Uh, Numbers chapter twenty-five, verse number one. And Israel abode in Shittim. Well, I hope he's going to quote some New Testament ones because that would be very nice. So wait a second. The Old Testament is not valid. Hmm, interesting. So basically, the Old Testament is not valid. So the New Testament, so verses in the New Testament that supposedly condone miscegenation, which they don't. Um, those cancel out the old. They'll supposedly cancel out the Old Testament ones. Hmm. Interesting. New New Testament uh, verses would be very very nice to have. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of. Uh, you know the the Old Testament is still God's word. You you do realize that, right? It's still God's word. Moab. So you have the Israelites that are committing whoredom with another kindred, the daughters of Moab. Uh, it's called committing whoredom. God likens interracial marriage to whoredom. Ezra chapter, or Nehemiah chapter. No, uh, you bring in other gods. That, that's, uh, you know. Okay, so if they bring in other gods, why does it mention their kindred, okay? Let me show you some scripture. Ezra chapter 10, here's some of the verses I quoted in the video, actually, that he's, you know, trying to refute. Ezra chapter 10, verse 1 to 2. Now when Ezra had prayed, he, or sorry, again, I'm not good at reading on a computer, uh, when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of the, out of, sorry, out of Israel, a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept or very sore. Verse 2, and Zechariah and the son of Je Jehel, sorry, and the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Verse 3, now therefore let us make a covenant with our God and put away all the wives such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord. 
and of those who would tremble at the commandment of our God, I'll let this be done according to the law. Huh. And notice how it says, of the land, people of the land. Um, it's talking about that area, okay? Um, people of the land. You know, that, that would be the Semitic, you know, you know, possibly the Arabs, you know, the other people. Um, sons of Elam, you know, t mentioning their kindred. And again, what do you think strange wives mean? Okay, it, it, and it doesn't talk about other religion. You know, it doesn't talk about they can't marry people of other faiths. Now that's definitely there, obviously, but it's talking about their kindred. Okay, uh, Nehemiah chapter. I have some verses written down there. Nehemiah chapter thirteen. Actually, let me just play the video. Support them. Yeah, I'll get to the scriptures later. Uh, you're not being faithful to what God have you know set up here, right? These people are going to come in and they're going to destroy you like basically they're going to lead you away from god because you're with strange women and they're going to lead your children away nine. and then you'll go chasing other gods women have uh, led many men astray like, they're they're not something that you should play around with <laughs> they can lead you astray first one uh, now on the 20 and fourth day so i guess christ was born out of boredom uh, no, and uh, again, I never said that. Okay, flat out lie. I never said anything like that. Again, these guys—they're just fending her. These guys—they're just all professional liars. They completely twist what I was saying. Okay, I never said Christ was born out of whoredom. Okay, he was of the tribe of Israel. Okay, I never said that. Christ is of the tribe of Israel. I never said he was born out of whoredom. Okay, what I was saying is that the children of Israel were committing whoredom with other kindreds. Okay, <sighs> I mean, totally twisting what I was saying. I'm guessing that's what he's uh, saying here. Christ's lineage is uh, three times was born out of whoredom. Uh, okay, I, again, I never said that. The people, the children of Israel that were doing that sin, they repented of it and they confessed it. And, they, and again, it says they put away their strange wives. Okay? I mean, it's totally lying about what I was saying. And the children of Israel were assembled with the uh, fasting and with the sackcloth and earth upon them. Verse 2, and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. The strangers huh, confess their sins? Huh. So they're confessing their sins. They're you know, talking about separating themselves from strangers. Huh. Interesting. Could it yeah. Unbelievers, again, you're not showing anything else other than... They okay, where does it say unbelievers in the verse? It just says stranger, strangers. Okay. They marry strange women, unbelieving women. Maybe that maybe God does condemn miscegenation and intermarriage. And again, you know, I'm not saying the law of Moses still applies. I'm just saying that God still condemns it. You know, God still feels the same way about sodomy, even though he doesn't say we should still have the laws of Moses. Uh, uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1. And on that day, they read in the book of Moses and the audience of the people. And therein was found written that an Ammonite and a Moabite, and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God, Forever. Hmm. The Ammonite and the Moabite, two different kindreds, should not come into the congregation of God, which is Israel. Verse 2. Because they met or because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. How bet our God turned the curse into a blessing? Again, God is condemning people of other kindreds coming into the congregation. Because why? Why? Uh John, you're you're missing the whole point of this verse. Because why? Maybe you should answer that first. Why? Okay, the verse mentions the kindreds. Okay, it mentions the kindreds. And, you know, again, I mean, uh, and again, the reason why they can't see it is because they're lost. There's no Holy Spirit inside of them. They can't see the truth. That's why they just keep trying to explain away the text, explain away the text. You know, ridiculous. What is it supposed to happen? Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and water, but hired Balaam against them. Yeah, the full context of Nehemiah 13 is condemning miscegenation. I'm going to show you that. That was just a portion of the context. The entire chapter is condemning miscegenation. I'm going to show you that in this video. That's why. Not because of their race, you nut. <laughs> why can't you see that? Like you are really stretching here, John. Really, you are stretching here. It, it's an amazing <laughs> Brian Denlinger Logic 101 right here laid out <laughs> for the world to see.
These people cannot think. They just cannot think. God. So we'll give me this thing that God doesn't condemn interracial marriage. He absolutely does. So Fenninger, you know, I mean, if you're just going to keep obsessively attacking me, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll come up with responses every once in a while. But... Uh, no, he wasn't obsessively attacking you. Uh, you made videos that he was trying to respond to you. And actually, in a very nice way, you may have taken it the wrong way, but he was actually doing it in a very nice way. Uh, okay, let me get to the scripture real quick. Because, you know, this, this uh, king's table obviously can't handle the text. Okay. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 1. On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written, An Ammonite and a Moabite should not come into the congregation of God. Okay? An Ammonite and a Moabite are two different kindreds. Okay? They're not part of the nation of Israel. Okay? Verse 2. Because they had not met the children of Israel with bread and water, they hired Balaam against them. You know, I've read that verse in the video. And uh, now it came to pass that they heard the law that, that they were separated from Israel. Or no, says that they separate from Israel. All the mixed multitude. Okay, what does mixed multitude mean? Hmm. I'd like to see him answer that one. If you jump down to verse 23, it says, In those days I saw the Jews, I had married the wives of Ashma, Ash, Ashdod and Ammon and of Moab. So they're marrying the wives of different kindreds, Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Okay, it's not talking about different faiths, it's talking about kindreds. Verse four, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not, yeah, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. So they're not speaking the Jews' language. Okay, clearly a different kindred. Uh, verse twenty-five, and I contended to them and cursed them and smote the, a certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, uh, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto the sons, nor your, or not give your, yeah, not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take your daughters unto your sons or yourselves. Verse 26, look at this. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God? And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Outlandish women? Huh. So, he's talking about religious people, but it's outlandish? Hmm, interesting. He's talking about different kindreds, obviously. And uh, look at this verse. Shall we then, or yeah, shall we then hearken unto you uh, that do all yet yeah, to do all this great evil, to turn dress against our God in marrying strange wives? Huh. Great evil. And it says transgress against our God and marrying strange wives. And again, not good at reading on a computer that well. But again, you know, it's ridiculous. It's clearly talking about different kindreds. Okay. It even mentions the kindreds. Am Ash Ashdod, Ammon. Ammon, Ammon, I guess that's it. Moab. Okay. It's clearly talking about different kindreds. Okay, on to the last video. This guy right here is a nut, okay? I was gonna say that right now. He just loves to just stalk my social media and just look, you know, look at the comments and look at all my social media and look at the comments. You know, ridiculous. But he did this video against me, you know, rebuking me. And, you know, let's just watch this. Give it a watch. And, you know, you're gonna see how there's there's just this guy there's no Holy Spirit in him. He's just totally dead. Greetings, brethren. Uh, I just want to talk about this guy, faithful servants. Um, I'm pretty sure his name was John Cragen for the most part. We gave him a lot of grace. Um, all of us in a group. Gave him and a lot of I'm not I I pointed this out earlier, but he subscribed to me. So I'm a lost hellbound heretic, but you're subscribed to me. Okay. Grace because of his age. And uh, thinking he just arrived on the block, but I think there's that's needed that something is said about this because the troubling of what he teaches, um, not just because he's making videos about Edward, but he's uh, teaching the same false doctrine and heresies that Brian Lynn Dingler's. Brian Denlinger is teaching and uh, is spreading and he's influencing others. Um, and uh, I just think uh, something needs <laughs> oh, to be Oh, I mean, said. this this guy sounds like he's half asleep. I mean, they're making the same heresies that Brian Denlinger. I mean, I mean, th th there's no Holy Spirit here. It's just, you know, totally dead, just totally just a dead spirit. You know, just there's no Holy Spirit. It's just this dry, just this dry, dead spirit. That's all there is, you know. Um, so he makes a video 
and Jace, Jason, it's titled uh, Jason Sinnerling, makes a play on his last name, defends child pornographer R. Kelly, which this has been uh, dealt with a while ago. And uh, let's just play it and see what he says. Do a video on this guy who just obsessively attacks us and, and makes videos about every little thing that we say. His name is Jason Sinnerling, or I, I, call, I like to call him Jason Sinnerling because he's, he's into all kinds of wicked sin. And I'm going to show you two clips of videos because, again, he just listens to every video we put out. Yeah, one, that, one thing I want to put out is this shepherd and ambassador. What he does is that he basically takes things from my lost life back when I was lost. He, he looks for things I did when I was lost that were bad and then just attacks me on those and, and uses those against me, you know? Because again, you know, one of these things these guys believe is he doesn't believe that changed life. So in his mind, when I'm saved, I can just, I just keep living as how I was when I was lost. So that's why he just takes things when I was lost and uses them against me, you know? And you're gonna see that in this video. videos about every little thing that we say. Um, no, Jason has not made a video about you, John Cragen. He has made videos. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just there's no Holy Spirit. I mean, he's just it's. Uh, and again, you know, he's not made videos about you. I never said he'd made videos about me. Okay, I said he made videos about people in our fellowship. That's what I was saying. Okay. I mean, and to be honest, I mean, this is actually like this is so dull. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, let's continue. Computing rebuking um, Tim, Jacob Tops, and Brian Dengler correcting his errors, but he has not made videos on you. Um, <sighs> uh, you're the one that uh, did the video first. You made a, a video on him first. Not the other way around. And he makes videos. We all make videos, so the young people like you don't fall into the clutches of Brian Englers here. So young people like you don't fall into the clutches of Brian. I mean, just spirits, just totally dead. I mean, this is. I mean, this is just so dull. I mean, I mean to be honest, I'm only two minutes in. And I'm not sure how much more I can endure of this, to be honest. But uh, and again, you know, he, you know, he, I'll, I'll skip to the part where he just is uh, bringing out the stuff where, I'm, where I was lost. You know, he goes to my BitChute page. You know, he subscribed to me on BitChute. You know, weird. So, I'm, again, I'm a lost heretic, but you're subscribed to me on BitChute. Makes sense. Free speech by the government, but um, according to the Bible, and uh, having, having a representative of Christ, being a representative of Christ, and sticking, uh, standing for the Bible, and representing the Bible, as a Christian, you shouldn't use such corrupt speech. And so he was replying to F Jesus. And, and again, that was when I was lost, okay? Again, you don't believe in a changed life, so you just think I keep living how I was when I was lost, you know? And he says to him, get AIDS and de die, you fat, and die faggot. So you don't, you don't, I don't care what, uh, Steven Anderson has taught you uh, he's wrong for doing such thing as that you don't wish death and get AIDS on people although um, and again I've lost when I did that okay and again that was months ago like four months ago way before I got saved you know but this guy he just loves bringing out stuff when I was lost and using that against me that is uh, homosexually out he is sad and you should should be for people, uh, God punishing <laughs> wicked. I mean, I'm not trying to start cocky, but this is so dull. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I can't, I don't know how much more of this I can even take of this. I mean, I mean, it's like, it, it's like homosexuality is sin, you know? It's like, and, and if he has, I don't know if he has like speech problems or something, but I mean, this is so dull. I mean, I keep saying it, there's no Holy Spirit in this guy. <sighs> it's just, it's just dry, you know? But you yourself don't, uh, there's just sinners that are just like you are. So you should say, uh, should uh, pray for them to get to uh, repent of that sin, to renounce that sin, 
to get out of that wicked lifestyle. But you, that's not something that you should be doing as a teacher or you get up and teach the Bible and teachers hold up a higher standard, a higher condemnation. You don't wish people to get AIDS and you don't wish people to die. And again, I was lost when I did that, okay? That's the point of a changed life, okay? That's not something that you do. I don't care what Steven Anderson, but that's... Okay, why bring up Steve? I, when, did, when did I mention Steven Anderson? Okay, why are you just bringing that up? It's weird. It's one. Okay, why is it a combination? Like just skip ahead. Tongue is a fire and a world world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. Oh, just skip ahead. This where you've heard, or you, you've heard that is, uh, it should come, and even now already is in the world. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Someone who has the Holy Spirit will confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. If you're going to see this clip, I'm going to play these multiple clips. Uh, Jason Singling says over and over and over again that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Not, not, uh, not is come present tense. Watch this. Okay. So you, 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 um, you pin, uh, Jason on this kind of semantics. That, um, uh, it's not semantics, it's what the Bible says. Okay, very clearly. I know Fenninger came up with this video that is come as archaic as has come. You know, trying to explain it with a text. Explain that. That Jesus is in the flesh. He did confess right after this. And uh, you ignore what uh, Jacob Thompson was uh, refuting. And he, w he was commenting, agreeing with Jacob Thompson for the most part. Okay, I didn't see that video when I was making that video. Okay? You know, I can total lie, you know. Of, uh, of this... Uh, I mean... To be honest, I mean, I can't endure much more of this. I mean, there's just, uh, you know, it, it's just, there's no Holy Spirit in this guy. So, I'm going to just play it a little bit longer, but to be honest, I can't endure much more of this. Rebuking this one kid uh, in 2018, who, who was all over the place, and uh, uh, his name was uh, Timothy uh, Dello. Let's go ahead. You're getting spread all for the Brian Bingley. Group and then he got into all different types of weirdness and he, uh, I guess, thankfully he, he hang up his coat from and you know. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> I mean, I mean. To be honest, I, I've had enough of this. I mean, this is just. I mean, it's it just he was making videos against you know. It's just there's no Holy Spirit. I, you know, I keep saying, you know, I've said it, you know, I've said it before, but there's no Holy Spirit. It's just, it's just totally dead. It's just, you know, just this, this, just dry spirit that's just, you know, <sighs> again, you know, these people who just lie about me and just attack me constantly, you know, they're wicked. And there's no Holy Spirit in them. I mean, I was, I was showing all three of these guys, there's, there's no Holy Spirit. There's no Spirit of God. It's just, it's just dead, totally dead. So... Anyway, this is my response to these uh, false accusations. God bless you. Goodbye.